Okay, we are at both the Goodwill and a secondhand store that's right next to the Goodwill. This is in a whole area in Denver that you said. Yes, yeah, South Broadway. South Broadway, that's thrift stores and secondhand stores and things. Vintage shops. Yeah, so what is it you're looking for today? Well, I want to find just a cute little sundress okay. for shooting tomorrow in the garden. In the garden, and then we're also going to be looking for things to stage your new living room. Yes. You know, they just bought a new 1930s. Tudor house, so we're just gonna kind of be looking for everything. Yeah, okay, little trinkets and everything like let's that. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay, so Tay, some Goodwills have gotten to be really expensive. What about this one? This one I feel like is just super reasonably priced. And where it's located, I feel like everyone just kind of drops off their donation items here so we can find some really cool Yeah, there, there were some stuff coming in just as we arrived and they've got it looks like a pretty good selection of not just decor items but lots of clothing too so let the hunt begin so this must be their tribute to barbie pink here i'm gonna guess okay taylor that's a cool wood planter i love it and I would take out what's in it. I would take out the plastic pot. It's yeah. glued in there, but I think you'd be able to take it out. And it's wood. And how much is it? Seven ninety nine. Okay. Will it go home or not? Taylor, this is kind of an embarrassment of riches. I'm already a little. <laughs> I'm already a little overwhelmed. So what are you looking for? Okay. So downstairs in our basement, we have a full wall bookshelf. Okay. And I just want to put some really cool vases or pots or things to kind of fill that up with color. Okay. It's all white. Okay. I am eyeing something already that I think is really cool. Okay. Look up here. Look at this pottery thing. Oh, look at that. Oh, yeah. Oh, for blue and white. But yes. Yeah. Two ninety nine. Okay. I know it's a little bit. Okay, but look at that big piece behind it. <gasps> Okay, now that is. Okay, look okay what is cool it? Is. Okay, that that is. Okay. It looks old. It looks it looks like, like an I don't know an old jug or something. But that, that and the cool. thing is, in your bookcases, I think go for things that are larger yeah. and larger in scale. Okay. okay. How much is that? Fourteen ninety nine. Fourteen ninety nine. Okay, that's a possibility. We may have to put it in our cart yeah, and. Let's do it. Okay. Very, very fun. Okay, Tay, I'm getting into blue and white. So be on the lookout for anything that's blue and white too. Okay. If you are wanting to do a whole combo of earthenware little pots, I mean, look here. You could come up with a whole trio here. Look at this of sweet little pots that you could put cactus in, you could put votives in. Really, really fun. Okay, I've seen, she's looking also for really massive candlesticks. And one thing I've noticed that there, there does seem to be some good mercury glass here. Okay, Taylor, what, what what is this globular thing here? Mound is and and is it smiling? Beautiful. I don't even know. I don't even know what's in there. So if we stick our finger in there, it might grab it. Okay, Taylor, I you just scored huge. You know how I love to entertain. I know. And this would be perfect, perfect. for a table setting. Perfect. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. I would get both of them. Let's okay, see. those are for Oh my gosh. Okay. What did you find? <gasps> okay. Now, the important thing is we're looking for kind of large scale things. These are two different heights. You're thinking these might look cool outside. Outside or on a mantle or whatever, but these these are pretty fun at five. Are they five ninety? Wow! How cool are they? Like metal yeah, or metal? They're, 
Oh, yeah. they're no, they're heavy. Okay, they're that's heavy awesome. Too. Okay. Awesome. Let's do it. In the basket. Wow. Yeah. You know, the pillar candles in and then fill the base up. Yep. Or oh, that's... ornaments or just all sorts of things. Oh, that is so that cool. Be fun. And it's, it, this is very, very heavy. Yeah. Um, you know what? You could also use it for. You could put like dips and things <gasps> in here and yes. then line this with something and have chips. Chips. Oh, that's such a good idea. We might have okay. to get that. That is very, very cute. I don't know how much it is I can almost see this hanging on your garage. Oh, that's really cool. In the back. That is very fun. Very fun. Oh, I okay. love that. This is a good pottery picture. I kind of, I kind of have a thing for pictures. Look at this. Oh, look at that cute little teapot. And it's got a turquoise lid. Oh, those are cool. They're blue and white. They're Ikea. Yeah. $3.99. $3.99. And I have to think through this. I'm not sure. What I really like about this goodwill is how they have things partitioned according to a certain color palette. So I'm obviously kind of migrating towards the blue. Yes. For my other house, I would be to the red. This is kind of a fun thing. And oh, wow. Okay, that's a really fun color of green. That's beautiful. So that's five ninety nine. Now, that's kind of pretty. So, Taylor, you're going to be thinking about what your pop of color is. She's predominantly grays and neutrals, and her husband, my son, Jamie, is very particular. <laughs> uh, but she will be thinking about her pop of color, and I kind of like this just kind of subtle base. I think it's kind of elegant. Yeah. It's just bloom in it. I can see this on my bar in the entryway just you know, something that wouldn't take up too much space so this may go in the basket okay so now glassware and servingware is always a biggie so oh i've got this right down here taylor i've got that shortbread pan oh, i've got nice. that at home <laughs> and what i like about you know what i like about thrift shopping is yes do you need any more stuff to bring into your home I certainly don't but the thing is I can switch things out if I get bored with what I have and for little expense oh what did you find okay, this, is, this is gold I'm looking for just another okay. sturdy big table to put fruits in uh, yeah a breakfast nook table right or just in the yeah home. I mean, Okay, but that would also be beautiful in your bookcases in the basement, yes. standing on, yeah. $14.99. $14.99. Is it going home with I you? Think so. I, I think, think so. I and too. I think Jamie would like it. You would love this, yes. Yep. It shall be yours. Taylor, <laughs> we've we're only, big. We're, we're scoring big, but we've trip. only been through, I think, like <laughs> three aisles. Three aisles. <laughs> and we are, are already overfloweth. <laughs> Oh, well, look at this. Okay, would you hold up that white? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that white platter. I've got all sorts of white, and this will be great for Thanksgiving, for whatever. And again, if I've got 
something that I need to get rid of and replace it with this, then that's fine with me. Okay, Taylor, what did you find? <laughs> topiary. Lemon topiary. I think I already have enough topiary stuff. But <laughs> you've always got my back. Really, really great glassware here. And I am eyeing this massive piece right here. Okay, there's just great, great metal work here. You know, I'm always on the lookout for stands and there's some really great stands here. Like, look at this. Really great galvanized metal stuff. Overflowing. So check this out. These are just awesome yeah. Wine I tell you what, bring that out and kind of hold it against the floor because it's hard to see. Yeah. No, that would be great in the bookshelves in your basement. And you guys do collect wine. Yes. And it does look kind of vintagey and it's minimalist yeah. and i think that is a great great find now you've got different ones to choose from right look at this one this one's kind of like a stack stackable one yeah but i like this one much better i think this one looks more expensive too. i think this is going home with me i think it is Okay, now these are a score look at these leftover containers that also have a microwavable bottom to them. Those are brilliant. These wooden corn on the cob holders are very fun. Okay, that's pretty cute. That looks like you very much. And you know, the nice thing is because of that color, it could go into fall too. How much is it? Okay, be very, very cute. Be darling with a hat. Very cute. Okay, what'd you find? I jacket. Oh, that's adorable. I need more safari looking. Yeah. This fits really, really well. It would be cute melted with it. Yeah. What do you think? I love it. For $8.99. I think you have to get it. So this week, what I am reading um, is, is kind of informed by a really, really lovely event that I shared with two friends of mine last Friday. Uh, two women that are the wisest women I know and we had cocktails and hors d'oeuvres and we just shared Let's just say we shared lots of stories that were revelatory. And uh, in the process, this book came up as a recommendation, The School of Life, uh, an emotional education written by Elaine de Botton. I don't know how I'm, I'm butchering that, I am sure. But we will put up a link you guys, this is brilliant. It talks about emotional IQ. It talks about how we are schooled in so many different things in the educational, uh, you know, math, writing, English, those kinds of things, engineering, physics. But we're not schooled along the way really in our emotional IQ. And unless we have parents that are savvy enough and they're not just trying to survive on a day-to-day -day basis to kind of impart that information. And a lot of times I think we're not interested in what an emotional IQ is until we get to be my age. And I, I think, I, let's just say, I wish I would have read this book when I was younger.
younger because I think it would have been, it would have helped me with my self-confidence, with my self-esteem, and it certainly would have made me a wiser person at a younger age and not take things so personally. So this is a wonderful book. I am enjoying reading it and I am enjoying putting all sorts, I am highlighting all sorts of things. Some of you are appalled that I actually highlight things in my books, uh, but definitely I do in my paperbacks and you know otherwise those books are just sitting on the shelf and unless they serve us they are just nothing but props and so I really want them to be life instructive not just home decor. Okay my next book that Leah has checked. I am so excited that this is still available, you guys. I have had this forever. It is El Decor Portfolio, Patios and Verandas. This is one of my more, my more loved gardening books, if, if you could categorize it as a gardening book. I pulled it out again recently as I've been doing the backyard. Um, and I'm gonna look and see Okay, this was copyrighted in 2003. So this is really an oldie, but very much a goodie. If you, if you look through the different pages, you'll see that it looks so timely, so contemporary, and quite frankly, um, if I may be so bold as to say very much me and my style. I mean, the cover picture, I think, pretty much says it all. Show them inside one more time. Yeah. Um, th this is it, is, it is just wonderful. And it gives different ideas for outdoor living in different languages. And when I say languages, different styles of architecture and different styles of gardening. And I would say that this is probably one of the most valuable books I have because I it's refer to it. It still looks so modern. Yeah, it still looks awesome. so modern. Yes, and relevant. And um, so anyhow, if for outdoor living, which is what I'm doing in the back, this has been invaluable. So definitely, I don't know how many they have available, but I definitely would click on the link that we provide below and get yours because again, it is an oldie but a goodie and I am thrilled that it is still available. Okay, now to what I learned this week. I don't know that this is something that I learned, but it's something that I have been thinking about. As the temperatures rise and as I talk about doing deadheading and doing watering and doing cutting back, um, a lot of people, not necessarily you followers because most of you are gardeners like me and you get it, but I think a lot of non-gardeners say, well, that is just a lot of work. And what I've been thinking is, there's something then that they are missing about those of us that are gardeners. We love gardening. So maybe we love this kind of work. Now, I, I have to, you know, somebody said, oh, well, you're, you've got a smaller garden, but it's still pretty labor intensive. Well, yes, but it's labor that I love. I could make it even less labor intensive, but then I wouldn't be gardening. I would just be, I guess, landscaping. So I think that that's something that non-gardeners miss about gardeners. Yes, it may be a lot of work, but that's why we do it because we love doing it. Um, we could, I, I guess to me, because I don't enjoy golfing, to me, golfing all afternoon, chasing a silly little ball around an expanse of green, that to me sounds like a lot of work. Good analogy. To a number of, <laughs> to a number of you, that is how you like spending your afternoon. Um, I'm not somebody that likes going to the mall. To me, that kind of is work, but some of you may enjoy that. So when people say, well, that's a lot of work, um, I think that they're missing something about about the very essence and the spirit of being a gardener, and that is we do it because we have to do it, because it is our joy and it is our passion. So give me your thoughts on that. That's what I'm thinking about this week, and tell me if you agree with that. Um, so, and make sure to get these books, because they are just wonderful, the books I am more excited about than anything I've read in a while. 
And here you go. Here's your outfit of the day. My husband asked me this morning, why are you all dressed up? And I said, because I have looked like swamp trash for the past three days. I've had a terrible sinus headache and I really just hadn't made much effort. So I decided that maybe if I put a little more effort into it today, my sinus headache won't seem, um, won't seem so debilitating. So from top to bottom, here is my outfit du jour. These are sunglasses. I think I got these a long time ago from Target. They are no name brand, but I like them. They're kind of retro chic. Um, I have to say that some of the items I am wearing today were gifts from you followers, starting with these earrings. I have showed you them before. I like them and my memory isn't what it used to be so please if you were the one that gave them to me please comment below and take credit for them i love these i have worn these quite frequently as i have this little ensemble of you guys know how i like to wear bandanas around my neck and a follower sent a wonderful brown bandana and she also sent this um scarf what do you call these leah uh anyhow it's really to kind of hold your scarf like this around yeah around your neck kind of like a bolo tie does hmm. um and i have used it for that but i also kind of like it as as a ring and by the way it came with matching earrings that i don't have on but what a sweet sweet thing and i think these were these were handmade so thank you thank you for that um my top is just white linen i don't even Leah, do you want, do you even bother with ironing your linen anymore? I, I really kind of don't either. I wash it, hang it up, and just let it do its thing, which is wrinkly. Um, so I just love these casual white linen shirts. I can't remember what brand this is, but we'll definitely try to put a link. And this skirt is vintage Target. I have probably had this for 20 years and it still works and more importantly I guess it still fits and then I just have my outdoor I keep a pair of these by the front door and the back door just and I, yes I need a pedicure <laughs> these um, yeah these are my cloud slippers and my bracelet came from Sephora many many years ago it came from Sephora it was actually a free gift and I, I like, like it yeah I do too okay so there you go there is my outfit of the day so here is the side path from the backyard end as it traverses to the front and they have recessed the stone a bit and then we'll put some infill in and around them I think when it's done, it'll be really handsome. One thing that I want to point out is this ground cover ajuga. So even though right now it is 100 degrees and this is in brutal heat and sun, it nevertheless is doing well. Some of it needs a drink of water, but nevertheless, it's really doing well. And it is starting to spill out over the edge and it will then take root in the expanse between the flagstone and that edging right there. So it's hopping the metal edging, softening it. And when it blooms in the spring, it will be really beautiful. Right now, not so much, but it'll be really beautiful in front of these encore azaleas. And even these moon dance hydrangeas are hanging in there now. What I attribute its success to are actually two different things. Number one, the fact that it is getting adequate water and that it had a chance to get established before it got so hot and so dry, but also that it has, in addition to adequate moisture, it has really good drainage because I have found if its feet stay wet for too long, it succumbs to root rot. So this is proving to be a good solution and a beautiful one to this area along the East Walkway. And yes, those are the kids next door enjoying the new pool. No better place to be on a hot day like this. Well, God love them.
Javier and Sergio are back at it in this heat because what we're doing is excavating out some of the dirt now around the outside of the patio. And you can see how they have chopped it up into grids like little patties and that makes them easier to remove. So I think Sergio does the gridding, doesn't he, Javier? He's the one who kind of, yeah, to channels it and then you scrape it off. And you're taking off maybe three inches. Yeah, between two to three inches. Yeah, between yeah. two to three inches. And we're gonna come back then and we're gonna fill this in with some of my special blend of mulch and in these areas, first we will put down some pavers upon which my plant stands can rest. They'll be even. And then I'll have some select plantings that I'll be discussing later. Right now, it's supposed to be up to 104 today, plus it's kind of windy. So they have their work cut out for them. But as always, these guys are real troopers. At this point, my plan for this area is to try to maybe espalier a couple of plants. I might even try the Little Miss Figgy from Southern Living on these two walls. And then in front of them will be two custom-made raised beds that Kayla is building for me. So there will be one right here, and there will be one over here. And then in addition, you can see that there's pretty much depth in this corner. And I'll have what I'm envisioning now to be probably a multi-trunk Yopon Holly, like I've got in the front. One here and possibly two more across the back of that fenced area. And then the raised beds on stilts will be in front of those. And then my vision is to perhaps in the foreground and around the tops, the top two areas of the top of the egg to have maybe some little villages of some grayish evergreens and things to kind of soften this area, but leaving more than enough room for passage onto and off of the patio. Now you can see here that the trench created by the plastic border that I showed you. And I, by the way, I, I provided a link and I'll provide another link to all of the products they use to create this patio. They have filled in that trench now. So by the time we get the mulch on top, there will be a seamless transition and you won't see anything. But it will also, as Kayla said, she knew I wouldn't be able to resist the temptation to plant in some areas right around the edge of the patio to soften it. So she has filled that in with rich mix, which is just a really, really good quality soil. So as always, the, the MO is chaos before order. And yet I think it's unquestionable that we are making progress. Don't you just love the way the east light comes through that lattice work? The stepping stones that start here on the south side of the replaced concrete landing at the top of these side steps now progresses across the landing and the same type of stone, even though it doesn't look like it because some of it's already aged after being in place, but some additional flagstone has been added down the east walkway. These pieces are larger 
they will make things more foot sure. And the other temporary pieces that were in, pay, in place will be used in other areas of, of the garden. For example, we're doing a, let me carefully walk over this way. But you can see that we've created a little throw rug underneath the bench. Now the throw rug itself to me kind of looks a little bit unfinished because I can already see what it will look like with more ajuga planted in between the throw rug and these pavers. But again, it was a way we're able to use some of those small pieces and recycle them. And then you can, can see, can, 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 you can see how the pavers then continue to the back and they are starting to put all of them into the ground and in place so they will all be level with the terrain itself. And then all of this will be cleaned up and neatened up, spread around. And then over time, I can't wait for these hollies to get large. And then over on this side, I feel like I need another punctuation point. I, I think one of the Terra hydrangeas did not make it. I think I had kept it out of the ground for too long. And I've also got some weeding to do in there. But I will have another conical punctuation point right here. And then the ajuga is really doing exactly what I wanted it to do. And that is spill over the edge. Even in 104 degree weather, in the morning at least, it still looks lush. <laughs>